Technology is said to be tightly woven into the fabrics of our lives. It is without doubt that over the years, everything we do has a direct or indirect dependency on technology, be it work, study, play or how we communicate and connect either with people or from one place to another. Tech is fostering a better present and future for our world's occupants. It is about innovation, creativity and transformation. It has been harnessed in myriad ways to solve many problems and many of the issues it can address are the world's greatest challenges. Within the last decade, technology has been empowering and enabling the underprivileged and dramatically altering their lives for the better. It is on that note that I welcome you to another edition of ICT Today. In this episode, I have with me Sheombayo from Grace Ak Academy, and together we'll be addressing how technology is being used for social good. My name is Abimbola Ilori, and you are watching ICT Today. Sheon, glad to have you on the program today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me today. Let us begin by looking at how tech is being used for social good. We have seen many career paths being identified, I mean, being defined as a result of tech. I want you to briefly talk about this new career path. Yeah, so basically, thank you so much for having me once again. I think we'll start from what tech actually is and what social good is. And basically, we in tech, we believe that technology is the application of scientific knowledge uh, to solve problems. And as we would know, social goods are all of those projects that benefit a large amount of people in the society. So talking about technology for social good and the new career pathway it has brought for us, it means that people in tech solving problems using technology for the larger part of the society or the largest people of the society. We would okay. find out that during the COVID era, yeah. everybody was on lockdown. Yes, and lockdown. so many social good projects came in from tracking COVID in different countries, using data analyze, data to analyze uh, COVID impacts in different countries. Uh, COVID era opened up lots more opportunity for technology, for technologists that are solving yeah. social good uh, problem, yeah. where we see cases of data analysis from NGOs, uh, community managers for NGOs that are solving, that are tackling COVID problems. We see um, accounting and business people in tech for NGOs. So basically, I think since the COVID era, it has opened up, technology has opened up a lot of opportunity as far as social good is concerned. And basically, before now, one of the jokes we used to make in tech is community manager wasn't the technological role. But right now, I can tell you since COVID era, okay. community yes. management now uh, became a far-fetched role that companies pay as much as $2K just to hire people to manage okay. their community. community. So all of the things we have seen, technology has uh, indirectly or directly impact social goods, social okay. welfare. And I don't know if you know, we in tech, there's always a program called Impact Challenge. Okay. The program where yeah. Google does every year okay. and they fund projects as project. much as $6 million, okay. social good projects. Project, yeah. And all of these projects that have been getting funded have now opened up new career paths, new rules that even if you don't want to be in tech, you don't have any chance Dangerous. than to join us in okay. tech. So a lot of um, opportunities and yes. career paths are opening up, yes. have been opened up, be it um, finance, be yes. it accounting, yes. be it community management, yes. be it and analysis. Yes. be it data analysis. Yes. Okay, good. So um, let's um, move further. <laughs> if we are to be more elaborate on exploring innovations beyond the boundaries, scaling in creative economy, in present day, what would be your opinion on the impact of tech in solving real world problems? So basically, like we used to say, uh, there are some problems that only technology can solve, whether we okay. agree or not. or not. There are some problems, and um, the funny part is even as we all know, internet, 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 internet is also a technological problem. And just imagine there's no internet in this day and age. It means that we are going to struggle a lot. Okay. Uh, so basically, like I said earlier, there are only, there are some problems, especially we in this part of the world, there are some problems only technology can solve. 
look at uh, challenges we're having in rural areas. Imagine if there's no uh, product like telemedicine where you can book a time with a virtual doctor, a virtual okay. pharmacist. Imagine online educational platform for those people in rural areas where you can access with the use of internet. So all of these technological solutions that we have seen has proven to us that uh, there are problems only technology can solve, number one. Number two, we also in tech, we believe that technology is not even only to solve problems right now. We have an acronym that says that, what would you tell your great-grandchildren when technology is uh, as our daily lives? We have seen automated cars, we have seen self-driving cars. Imagine what it will look like in 2070. What do you want to tell your great-grandchildren uh, when your mates were learning how to use tech, tech. learning how to manipulate technology, what's what you were doing? What's because, your contribution? Because one of the questions that uh, we ask jokingly is what my great-grandfather was doing when people like Isaac Newton, Michael Faraday were, were solving the, problems, were problems coming, and up coming up with uh, innovations. innovations. Yes. So what do you want to tell your great-grandchildren you were doing uh, when his own generation was learning not only how to use tech, how to manipulate tech, how to solve problems using technology. I feel a bit challenged in that um, aspect that if my grandchildren should come to me and ask me when your colleagues, when your mates were coming up with innovations, coming up with apps, ideas that can, that is being used today as a solution to our current challenges and they asked me, Grandpa, where were you? What, I thought you said you are in tech. What were you doing? OK, well, um, we've all found ourselves in tech, and uh, we would all contribute our quota and bring in new innovations. And part of that innovation is what we are doing here today. We are educating the yes. public. Yes. Yeah. So it's a part of it is edutech. Part of it is information technology. Yes. So finding yourself in the tech space can be overwhelming, considering the innumerable innovations, preferring solutions to our daily challenges. I want to ask you, how do you see these innovations inspiring youth to pursue a career in technology? Thank you so much. So in the words of uh, Kruger, he says that you either innovate or you die. So basically, I think uh, technological solutions or innovations that we have seen right now should inspire us, especially with the young people, my generation, not yeah. your generation, because you people are already... Well, and so, especially with the young people, these technological innovations, or innovations generally should inspire us to do more, it should inspire us to solve problems. For example, right now, as uh, in, third, in first world countries like China and Co, yeah. I think if you get to a certain age as a teen, you start learning how to use technology, you start learning how to build solutions using technology. But in this part of the world, we don't do that right now. So I think, uh, aside being young also, all of these innovations that we have seen across the world that is being shipped here should also inspire stakeholders of this country, should also inspire the government, not only young people, to see how to bring more people into tech, let more people come and solve problems using technology. But like I said, the work still boils down to my generation. Let all of these innovative solutions we have seen, let them inspire us to solve problems, to come up with problem-solving ideas and to also build product uh, problem-solving products. Okay. Thank uh, you. Well, well, you you said not my own generation. Well, I want to shock you that there are a lot of people in my category that are even far much more into tech than you can imagine. I've seen people that retired from civil service and they venture into tech, and they are even very much more versatile compared with somebody that is young vibrant and fresh in tech. So you, get, you see the challenge with that is yes. uh, somebody that after spending 35 years in civil service, no matter how vibrant you are, I'm not sure you can beat somebody that is 18, that can think 24 hours. Your brain is not as um, very fast as the person that is 18 or 19. So I'm not sure where somebody that is 18 like me is talking or is thinking about solving problems. Okay. You would be able to also think to that extent. And for example, you retired from that five years in civil service. I can bet that you may not be able to stay overnight two, three days subsequently without having a day. But young people like us, we can stay overnight because we are thinking about problems, we are thinking about solutions, we are looking at the problem, we want to look at what we want to build, we want to look at how to solve this problem, which would not, uh, it would not, not, it will not be detriment to us, but somebody that is 50, 60, no matter how good or no matter how fantastic your brain is, the point is you can't match with that we are young. Let, let, let me quote you. The, the, the fact is that at that point, 
they are not seeing they are not venturing in such person is not venturing into tech as a career path mm -hmm. they are venturing it as a retirement plan one and as a passion it's only a passionate person when you are it's only when you are passionate about something yes. that is when you do it even after retirement yes. do you get it is only in this part of the world that you see people after retiring from one service and they'll go back home and start sitting down yes. in the developed world west for instance you see somebody that has retired from the army mm -hmm. and will still pick up um, a, an internship job yes. with uh, a one tech yeah. company yes. do you get yes. so yes. that's where where the difference is it is not as a career path now but as a passion well that's settled we've seen several occasions and at different instances i've met quite with quite a number of people who tend to be confused entering tech either they want to switch career or they just want to enter tech as a passion so with your experience in edutech and software engineering what would you say what would you advise so basically uh, for us we advise people especially when you are joining tech whether you are switching career path you're a newbie or you're jumping into it you should treat technology or treat your new career path the same way you treated your old career path for example you whether you're a doctor you spent how many years in the university to get a doctorate degree or you spend four years in university to get BSc, but you don't want to spend time enough to learn about the rudiment of tech. Okay. Uh -huh. So one of our advice is, number one, treat tech, treat technology as the same way you will treat it if you are doing law. And okay. the same way you will treat it if you are doing law is you will go for knowledge. You will attend classes that are, whether they are relevant or irrelevant, or because you want a law degree. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, there are lots of information on the internet consume as much as more information you can find consume as much as more technological materials blog posts newsletter that you can find okay. just continue annexing knowledge they say no knowledge is a waste okay so just continue and you find knowledge. your path and from annexing knowledge you typically uh, find one what you can do so after you have after you have gone for knowledge it gets to some certain extent where because of the kind of knowledge you have yeah. You start noticing problems that you know that only technology can solve. And that's, that's where it starts from. Mm -hmm. uh, like I used to use for an example. Imagine the current voting system in the country. I know okay. you just count in one, two, three, and there's no, no technological yeah. solution. Mm -hmm. So because of the kind of knowledge that you have harnessed, the kind of, the kind of knowledge you have consumed. You come up with ideas. Everywhere you go to, okay. you start seeing Same problems ah, that, this is that this. tech can solve. Yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, and that is basically different. Somebody started with edtech platform, online platforms where people yes. can learn. Somebody started with telemedicine platform. Even as small as um, booking Uber, somebody started with two people can book a ride and it mm -hmm. would not cost them a lot. So because of the knowledge, like I was saying, because of the knowledge you have consumed, okay. where you go everywhere, you start seeing problems and yeah. you start thinking about technological solution. Whether you can build it or not is another case. But because of uh, what you have inbuilt into you, your mind, you start seeing all of these problems and you start tracing. For example, uh, there are lots of problems when I walk in my street, I see uh, that only tech can solve. But okay. because I don't have time to build all of these products or to solve all of it, I just ignore. Some of the times I just tell people that, oh, this is a problem, this is a problem. do That's you yes. like to try it? So yeah. if you are coming into tech, harness uh, knowledge, uh, will look out for problems, opportunities. And the funny part is technology is a skill or is, an, is a career where no matter where you are coming from, it will accept you. No matter what you are bringing, whether you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, it will always accept you. Yeah. And it is a career path where you can even be doing what you are doing and you are still harnessing all of this yeah. knowledge. If you are on research, if you are not on coursework, yes. If you are on research, PhD, mm -hmm. right? You identify problems. You come up with a solution and if your solution is verifiable and viable then you go for it do the project solve the problem make your presentation and if it is verifiable and um, quantifiable you get your doctorate yeah well one of the good things about we in tech is uh, aside because we don't offer you phd yes. there's something we call funding okay i was reading last week of a 13 year old high school boy in asia that has a product that got funding worth $15 million. $15 million? $15 million. $15 million. It's, okay. not, it's not 18 yet. He's in high school? Yes. It's not okay. even 18 yet. He's a 15-year-old boy. 
So even though we don't give PhD or yes. all of those things, they but get, you get the money, you, you get the funding, you get the funding. And you get the, like I will sell to you for life. Okay. Yes, you get oh. the funding. Like okay, I so you, you might you might not get the academic qualification, the yes. certificate, yes. but if you can take the pain, mm -hmm. you get the funding that can set you for life. Sure. That okay. can set you for life. Okay. You've actually mentioned the initiatives that can be taken to boost your, okay, you have actually discovered that I'm going in this direction. Yes. If you want to go into networking, if you want to go into software development, if you want to go into engineering, yes. if you want to go into just app development, yes. what would be your advice to boost their initiative? So after getting as much knowledge that you need and you know where you are going to, yeah. Uh, the next step basically is to attend what we call boot camps. Boot okay. camps are basically a fixed uh, training programs, whether online or offline, okay. that you can attend and they can now teach you or impact knowledge about the specific skill that you want to go into. So, and boot camps are everywhere online. And for the funny part is there are free boot camps. They are paid boot camps. So whatever or the kind of situation you are in, whatever works best for you, you can start with free boot camps and you can also start with paid boot camp if you are buoyant enough. But boot camp is the way to go. And the reason is because we believe that at boot camps, you will not only learn, number one, you, you will also network. Because in tech, networking is key. You also network with other people. Uh, people will learn to know you. People will get to meet you. You get to meet people. people. Because you need this network. You network, yeah. yes. Number three, you also have a community you can reach out to. to. There sometimes you where, talk. as a software engineer, yeah. you look at one problem for two weeks and you are not finding a headway. If you don't have such community around you, you would not be able you to solve something. They're left hanging. And you just be looking at it every day. So, and the funny part is, lastly, bootcamps give certificates. Although we know that a tech, those certificates does not even really satisfy your skill. Okay. But of course, to have it, have it sick, they give certificate. But boot camps and every tech platform, offline or online, they are, uh, this, those are what I advise, or those are what we advise people to do after getting, or after knowing where they are going to. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I want to digress a bit here at this junction. The, this guy is also obviously a software developer mm -hmm. and he works from home. He does not have a relationship with um, the neighbors. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he just noticed that um, he was arrested. Not arrested, the police came to his apartment and they started searching. Mm -hmm. And after searching, searching the home, searching the PC, searching everywhere, they didn't find anything. And they just told him that you have to be careful. We have been talking about venturing into tech, working from home, working remotely. And you discover that if you are working in this environment, if you work from home and you work remotely, power is not your friend. Okay. You might need to of be course. on your own power yeah. supply yeah. generator 247. So somebody that is in the, at home 247 with generator on, and his neighbor sees that he doesn't go out, but he's always on, on gen 247. You know the identity with the... So after the whole search and all that, they ask him to be careful. And um, how do we address this, this issue? We, we, how do we address that? Yes, let me, let me stop. Yeah, there. so it's so funny because this issue, I've had friends that had been in it, not one, not two, not three, not four, yeah. not five, where uh, the security agencies post them, and at the end of the day, we get to discover that because this person just stays at home and work from home, people just. So I think, and I think that is why programs like this exist. Yeah. Because for one thing we need to do is education, we need to educate stakeholders of our society. Yes from our neighborhood to the security agencies to government people just need to get educated to see life is not as hard as it used to be okay you don't need to dress up in the morning wake up at 5 a.m yeah. dress up brush to beat the traffic yes. and get to work by 8 a.m yes because okay. if we don't do that it will be at the detriment of our future as a nation because okay. for example uh, let's just imagine uh, all of these things that were shipped to this country wasn't shipped. It means that at a point in people's life, they took pain 
built all of these products. Okay. If uh, we, like they used to say in the, in, in the public market that if we don't ship product out of Nigeria, mm -hmm. our economy will not grow a lot. So if we don't allow people to build products that will ship, ship how products. do we want to? So all of these things start with educating the stakeholders, educating people around us, educating our society. Okay. Let your family members no. know okay. first that somebody that is working from home doesn't necessarily mean the person is into fraudulent Activity. activities. Okay. And also, uh, I think basically it boils really down on the security agencies where they also need to be educated that because somebody is driving Benz, no matter how young he is, how young he is he's yeah. not a fraudulent person. And uh, aside that, all other people too should also be educated. And I feel that this is also the situation of the country, because if I do not use gen in my house, you will not even know I'm inside. Yes. So because I'm only gen every day. So of course, we just need to educate our people, let them know that there are so many things you can do right now that will bring you money, that will fetch you money, and they are not necessarily fraudulent means. Yes, we have seen a lot has been said on tech, venturing into tech, how to switch career from wherever background you are coming from into tech. So what do you think this generation can do to be inspired, to make you positive use of the innumerable opportunities that is available by tech? We've noted that there is um, an identity associated with people working from home. So, how to make positive use of this opportunity and not the negative? Yeah, so basically I, I think or I'm of the opinion that education does all of these things. Uh, I've spoken with some students from private institutions in this country where I discovered that um, most of the times they give them coursework from school, expect them to do at home during their summer breaks, and especially private universities. And in fact, it, is, it has gotten to a point where all of these private institutions don't do black and white chalkboard. Yeah, exactly. you, before you get admission to the school, you need to have a laptop, Top, you need yes. to have a pad, yes. and all of those things. Where on the other side, their counterparts sometimes can be a graduate that doesn't even know how to use as basic as Microsoft Word is. So okay. I think. Uh, having a core uh, educational, uh, and also think that something like edutech okay. should be like a coursework in our course, curriculum. Yeah, to in, say, a, in the curriculum of the conventional yes, university. Yes, to say this is what technology is. These are career paths. There's nothing in this life that has good that doesn't have a bad path. Okay. Yeah, so these are good career paths you can venture, venture into. That will make yes. you. Uh, we wouldn't want you to stay on the bad path part of the law. We will not want you to stay on the bad side of things. Okay. So I believe to that, to, to that extent, uh, techno, uh, education, educational tech, edu tech should be like a course firm. And I think it should start from primary, secondary schools. Because all of these young girls are saying that it's that brother that used to stay at home, that is driving the Benz, mm -hmm. rather than their daddy that is going to work to every work, day. Yes. So even though they don't know what that brother that is staying at home to do, but because of the bad information that is around and yes. they say it's fraud, they just okay. assume that anybody fraud. that's saying at yeah. home. So all of those things, if you bring somebody with dreadlock now that has a bench to a primary school to say this is what I do daily, I'm a software engineer, yeah, okay. it will take it will change the perspective of those young ones to say, Oh, there's actually something the called software engineering, software engineering that I can yes. do. Okay. I can venture into okay. that will not that is not bad. Okay. That is good and it can fetch me. Okay. So, of course, we should take uh, that education from the root and also let these young people know that tech is not the bad part that we used to know. Okay. There's also the good part of technology. Okay. Like, um, for somebody who is a hacker now, like, we have the black art. Yes. We have the white art. Mm -hmm. And it is only when you make bad use or you use that knowledge mm -hmm. negatively. negatively yes. That is when they said he has been hacked. Yes. But when you make good use of it mm -hmm. and you come up with solutions. I want yours to compare, do a comparison now. I, how would you describe venturing into tech as a high school graduate? Somebody that just left high school and he says, okay, me, as, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to go into tech. I don't want to go into university, sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to university. I just want to go straight into tech. tech. And somebody that has a university degree 
or a professional exploring career path in tech. Mm -hmm. There any, any any advantage for high school or for a university graduate? So, like I said earlier, no matter where you are coming from, tech will always accept you. But we have this belief that if we get to a point in this world, you must have the minimum knowledge to be able to use technology. Okay. And it's the same way, not everybody that drives a car, when the car breaks down, they can even open their bonnet. So it's the okay. same way, uh, technology will come to a time where we, it's something we are always using every time as a user. And it gets to a time where you must learn how to manipulate it. So everybody that wants to learn how to use tech must get okay. basic technological knowledge, whether from high okay. school. For people that build products, that's people that we call manipulate tech. They want to learn how to manipulate tech. Well, if you think after high school is something you want to focus on, is it's not a yes or no direct answer. It's okay. you, you know what you think, or you okay. know your capacity. Okay. Some, people, some people that I've spoken to, or some people I've heard, may not have the cost to venture to a four years university. Okay. So they want to learn, they can use it to sponsor their, their education. Yes, their education. Their, okay. I've seen people like that. Okay. And I've seen After some, high school, yes, they learn tech. They learn tech. And with that, okay, those are, the, oh, those are the category of students that you see that will come to school with exotic cars yes. and people would Wonder. label them otherwise <laughs> yes okay so and also i think while you're also learning tech there are online uh, university degrees right now that you can even take uh, if Harvard can be taking an online course and they will give you a certificate later why not also latch on the opportunity it's part of the opportunities that technology has opened us to so okay. there are distance learning right now that even federal universities in nigeria do now okay and they will give you your degree you okay. still collect the same degree, degree. somebody that went every day with okay. college. So, and you can even make good use of your time. So you just uh, knowing your capability and knowing what best fits you. If you think, oh, you are in a situation where you want to learn this thing, you need to fund this stuff, it's fine. If you think, oh, you have enough funds, you want to go ahead to get a four-year degree, but let's just hope that uh, the use of technology will not catch you in the four-year degree, and you will not be able to use tech after four years. So basically, that's just it. If you think this is the other part that is favorite for you, you can go. If you think university will help you, you can also. Okay, thank you very much. Um, on a final note, now, there are countless examples where technology has positively impacted our lives yes. by addressing real world problems. Mm -hmm. We have mentioned those problems, some of which include poverty, yes. hunger, yes. transportation, and many more. Can you cite examples of using tech to solve poverty, using tech to solve transportation problems, using tech to solve communication problems? So I'll start from the food aspect. Okay. I, I think uh, last year, WHO uh, released the statistics that over 800 million plus are hungry across the world. Okay. And so there's, there's some few guys that came up with a technology social good products. They call it, I think it's called Share Meal, where okay. you can just install the application, you have a meal to share with young people, especially young people, and you share that meal with them. That's, that's like an innovative product uh, catering that food aspect. For transportation, like I mentioned earlier, we can now sit at the comfort of our, of our house, house, book a ride. Yeah, book a ride. Those are technological solutions and innovation. In the healthcare, now you can sit in your house, get consultations with doctor from all these telemedicine ap application. Those are technological innovation, those are technological solutions. And even in the agricultural sector, there's okay. this app where uh, when your I, I was watching their demo two two days back, is an app where it is integrated with AI where the if you install the app and you flip to the camera of your phone, it can tell you when this uh, this particular crop is facing this particular challenge, whether disease-wise and all of that. So I tell you, this particular crop is going to be ripe at this and all of that. And even in the agricultural sector, we have heard of hydroponics and aeroponics, where you grow, you don't grow on the physical ground anymore. Mm -hmm. You grow, they call it grow crops in the air. So all of these things are technological advancement and technological solutions that we have come up to see. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been an interesting time on thank the program. You so much, Fabio. And um, I look forward to having you again and again on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. There are innumerable innovations to help solve poverty in both developed and developing economies. 
access to loan by low-income earners from non-profit organizations, mobile banking access to everyone everywhere to access banking, mobile healthcare information on inexpensive devices for the underprivileged. This and many more demonstrate channels through which technology is being used for social good. And that is the package for today. Kindly connect with us on all our social media platforms. Hit the bell icon to receive notification on new updates and when we post new videos. You can also connect with us on our website www.ogtv.com.ng for such live for news and happenings around you. Until next time when I return with another package. Remember, if it is digital, it is part of ICT.